So for the last 40 days or so, I have been using the GNOME desktop environment as my daily driver. Now, I did have some dalliances with KD Plasma there for a little while, but for the most part, I've been using GNOME. And I have thoughts. I've shared some of those thoughts in previous videos. I'm sure I'll share some more thoughts in subsequent videos from this one. I'm going to be in GNOME for a while, so I'll probably have some things to say about it. I'm not overly happy with it. That's the reason why I've had said dalliances with Plasma, because... I would prefer to use Plasma, but it's buggy and all that stuff. So I have some issues, but I'm on GNOME. I'm okay with it. Let's just put it that way. In the previous videos where I've talked about GNOME, one of the things that I've been asked the most is how do I get GNOME to look the way that I do? So what I wanted to do today was talk about a few of the extensions that I use and a few of the tweaks that I have enabled to make GNOME function and look the way that I want it to work. So that's what we're going to do today, but before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at my version of GNOME. And if you take a look at this, you'll probably be thinking, Matt, that really looks like Windows. And you wouldn't be wrong. It does, in fact, look like Windows. Now, I didn't set out on purpose to use a Windows-like layout. I just didn't. In fact, I started out with the vanilla GNOME layout where you have a bar along the bottom and your little panel of apps is kind of hidden away. I, it was okay, but I really did not like that my favorite apps were out of sight, right? I wanted them where I could see them basically all the time. So I installed the extension dash to dock, which basically brings that dock up and allows you to control it more readily. So I can have it on screen all the time or whatever I wanted to do. Now, I also didn't really like it on screen all the time. So I was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I didn't want it on screen all the time, but I also didn't want it hidden all the time. It was a weird place to be. So I kind of settled on this because it allows me to have my things on screen without taking up as much space as Dash to Dock did. So that's kind of how I ended up here. Yes, it looks like Windows, but I don't really care that it looks like Windows, it works well enough for me. So I have a menu along the left-hand side, then my pinned icons, and then I have my system tray. It's, it's a very simple layout. So what I wanna do next is talk about the extensions that I use to get here. And the application that I use to manage my extensions is called the GNOME Extension Manager. Now, this thing here is not installed by default. One of my biggest complaints about GNOME overall is that it's not customizable, right? Well, this app fixes that and it really should be installed by default. It really should be a default GNOME application. It really should be. I mean, they already ship a, a extensions app. It allows you to enable and disable and delete uh, extensions. It does not allow you to install them. I don't know why that app even exists anymore. This one here should be the default. I don't know what they're doing over there in GNOME land, but this one here should be default, and I would argue about it until I'm blue in the face. But that's beside the point. This basically allows you to manage your extensions. And as you can see, I have a fair few extensions installed. A, a fair few. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say a fair few is a good descriptor of how many extensions I have installed. Now, I don't have them all enabled or anything like that. That'd be just insane. Uh, but I do have a few of them enabled, so I thought I'd go through a few of them. I won't go through all of them. You can take screenshots or whatever if you want to completely reenact my uh, setup here. But I'll talk about the important ones. The so first one is Arc Menu. That's this thing here. And it is awesome. So first off, I don't actually use the menu part of this all that much, to be honest with you. I just use it for search and stuff. But every once in a while, I'll find myself going in here and clicking on something. But for the most part, I just use it for search. But I like it because it's so customizable. So if we go into the settings here, you can basically customize every single part of the menu. And that's amazing. It's really, really good. But even better, if you're lazy but still want that customization, you can go into the menu section here and then menu layout. And they have almost two dozen, maybe even more preset layouts that you can choose from so if you wanted to choose like a, the regular windows one or the plasma one or if you want to go up here and choose the whisk or brisk menus whatever you want to do you could choose that select it and then voila you have that particular menu at your fingertips you had to do nothing to get get there it's awesome it's so good and well like i said i don't use it as often as maybe if I, I should being in a desktop environment, it's really a good thing to have if you use a menu all the time. You can customize it any way that you want, which is, again, very nice. So that's Arc Menu. 
The next one that I use is Blur, blur My Shell. Blur My Shell basically allows me to blur certain aspects of GNOME's user interface and certain applications. So in this case, I use it to blur two things. I use it to blur the panel there along the bottom, and I use it to blur Tilex, which is my preferred terminal emulator here in GNOME. So that's basically all I do with it. It allows you to customize the blur and opacity and stuff basically any which way you want. There are certain, there are different types of blur, blur that you can use. You can set them for different applications and different parts of the UI, all that stuff. It's all available right here and it's very, very easy to basically get into. So that's Blur My Shell. Not particularly useful, but it makes things look pretty. Now, Caffeine lives down here in the quick menu settings. And if I turn this on, basically what it does is it prevents my screen from turning itself off. Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I usually have a hard time getting them to turn off. In the case of a lot of desktop environments, I have a, a trouble with them going off when I don't want them to. Like for say example, when I'm recording a video, I don't want the screen to turn off. Uh, and it happens a lot when I'm like in a window manager or whatever, and I don't have something installed to stop it from doing so. Caffeine basically just allows me to make sure that the screen will stay on when I want it to stay on, which is nice. The next one is the clipboard indicator. Basically, it's just clipboard history. I use it all the time. I'm not going to actually show you uh, my clipboard because I might have passwords in there or something like that, but it lives down here in the bar. I can click on that and, it, and then I can select from any of my uh, clipboard history and, re and reuse it on the clipboard. So that's really nice as well. And I use that. I use a variation of that on everything that I use. So that's something that I have to have. The next one I use is dash to panel. That's basically this thing here. And like I said, this is not the first iteration of a panel that I had. I kind of got here through a series of elimination tests, if you will. And I like dash to panel and dash to dock pretty much equally. One is just a panel, one is a dock. They basically have the same settings. They just look a little bit different. One's a panel, one's a dock. So that's the difference between them. You can customize this thing to your heart's content. It'll allow you to do basically anything you want to do. Choose where stuff is on the bar. You can choose how wide it is, if it's floating, if there's a margin or a padding. You can change the icon, the color, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and you can do just a ton of fine tuning to make it look exactly how you want it to look. And as you guys know, I like to customize things. So that kind of really uh, tickled my fancy, if you will. <laughs> so <laughs> that is dashed panel. Uh, you've probably heard, I mean, that's been around for a very long time, so I don't need to go too far in depth into it. D DD term is basically my scratch pad. That's what this thing is. And I had a hard time finding a scratch pad application that would allow me to use it in GNOME. Now there's one for KDE. I didn't want to install the entire KDE stack in order to get it. So I avoided that. And then there is a version of that which is written in GTK, but it doesn't work very well in, in uh, Wayland. Uh, Tilex, which I love, does have a drop-down terminal as well. But again, it doesn't work very well in Wayland. So I had to kind of go searching for something different. Someone on, Way and on Mastodon pointed me towards DD term, and that's what I've been using for uh, my, my scratch pad. I, I don't have it attached to a, a key binding yet, or if I do, I've forgotten what it is. So I just installed it the other day, so I'm still kind of getting used to it being there again. So that is DD term. Now, I have a couple others that I don't have enabled right now. Uh, that I do use every once in a while. So do not disturb while screen sharing or recording is is an, is really cool for when I have the podcast going. Uh, I don't use it all the time, um, but when I we do a podcast, I, I turn that one on, and basically it allows me to ensure that do not disturb is enabled when I'm recording the screen or my microphone is, is, is active. So basically that keeps me from having weird notifications show up on the screen while I'm recording the screen. So that's nice. Another one is hide top bar. I don't have it on because I don't use the top bar at all when I'm using dash to panel because uh, that hides the top bar itself. But when I was using dash to dock, I like to hide the top bar and that's uh, something that that extension allows you to do. Just Perfection I inst has a ton of features. Okay, Just Perfection allows you to do a ton of different stuff. A lot of them I have no clue what they are. There's precisely one thing that I use it for, and that's to move the notifications. So because I don't have a, a, a bar at the top, which is where GNOME traditionally has a bar, I usually that's where the notifications appear is at the top. I don't want them to appear at the top. I want them to appear on the bottom, preferably on the right-hand side. Just Perfection allows me to do that. So that's what that extension does. For me, it does a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, some of the stuff I'm like, I'm not sure 
actually what all this stuff does. I haven't played around with it at all. I just have basically done that one thing, and that's what I do. So that's what Just Perfection is. Now, Media Controls basically just puts the now playing here in the bar. So if I'm playing a, a track or whatever. So if I have Plex open and I'm you know playing a, a song or whatever, it'll just show the song and the, and the album name or the artist down here in the bottom. And if I click on it, I can get to player controls and stuff. So that's really nice to have. So this tiling shell, which is the next one to talk about, is one that I actually just installed yesterday. I saw it on OMG Ubuntu, and it's really neat. So if I drag this window here and then kind of hover up here, it basically allows me to have a tiling mechanism up here where I can kind of choose where I want the tile to go. And that's really freaking cool. So I can, you know, if I want to tile it there and then I open up a terminal or whatever, and then I can go up here and just put that there, you know, and, and while it's not automatic tiling, like Forge would be, I, I have Forge installed, I don't use it. This will basically allows me to have quarter tiling, but on different layouts. So I can actually, you can, with this tiling, with, with this extension, you can change these layouts if you want. And so you can have different layouts and you can just kind of have those things wherever you want them. And then it will allow you to basically tile the windows such as you will. And that's really cool. Now I haven't, like I said, I haven't played much around with it. I just installed it yesterday, but it's something that I think I'll probably keep installed because it works really, really well. User theme just basically allows you to theme the GNOME shell. And finally, weather clock just puts the weather down here at the bottom. As you, you guys can see, it's very, very hot. And uh, now I don't live in the South. Okay. That's why this is very hot. Like the, the guys in like Arizona are like, that's not, that's not hot. We'd kill for 90 degrees. Uh, I live in Michigan. <laughs> We're not supposed to get that hot. Okay. We have lakes for this shit. Um, Take your heat back. We, we, we're, we're, we're Canada South. It's not supposed to be this warm, okay? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> and rant. It's not supposed to be this hot. Anyways, that is the end of the extensions that I have installed. That's basically it. Now, I have a whole bunch of ones that I have installed that I don't have enabled, like Forge. That's automatic tiling. The compact top bar and the hide top bar and stuff. I've talked about some of those because those are really useful when I was using a different panel. I also have one called Window Title is Back. That is another one that I have when I had a top bar. It just basically puts the window, t window title up there. Same thing with Vitals. Vitals is, if I turn that on, you can see that it basically just gives you your vitals for your computer. Now, I've turned it off just because I kind of run out of room in my panel. If I had another panel up there, I suppose I could use it. But as it is right now, I'll just kind of keep it off. So uh, that's another one. So those are the extensions that I use. So the other thing that I should talk about a little bit is the tweaks that I use. It's, I don't use a lot. So first, the appearance or whatever. Right now, I'm just using Edweta as my theme. I, I have a couple others that uh, I will be using in the future. Like every month or so, I change my theme and uh, I'll choose something different after this month is over. But right now, I'm using Edweta. I use Taylor Purple for the icons down here. Honestly, I don't really care what icons that I use in GNOME. As long as they're not the Edweta ones, I'll pretty much use anything. I'll probably go to Papyrus next or something, but I'm not that picky when it comes to icons, to be honest with you. The only other tweak that I really have is the uh, title bar buttons. So I have Maximize and Minimize up here at the top. Those are not default, and honestly, I can't use GNOME without them. So Now, there is a, a key binding Super H, and that will hide the active focused window, which is nice, and I did not know about that until somebody told me, but... I still prefer to have the buttons up here. So if I want to maximize this thing, I can. If I want to minimize that thing, I can. And it, the button's just there. Uh, so that's really the only t tweak that I have enabled other than the theme. And even though, and the, even then, the theme is just the default theme <laughs> as of right now. So it, it's not anything special in terms of tweaks. If, if they had the minimize button and the maximize button up here by default, I probably wouldn't even have to have tweaks installed. That's where I'm at right now in terms of, you know, I'm, like, I'm at the point where I can have enough extensions to make things work the way that I want them to work. I don't need the tweaks if they had the minimize thing. If they had the minimize button there by default, I would not have to have it installed. So, yeah, that's really all I do in terms of making GNOME look this way. Those are the extensions I use, the tweaks that I use. Nothing else is all that special. I, I customize a few different key bindings so like i have super q to close things i have super w to open up a browser things like that uh, but other than that there's nothing else here that's my version of gnome very very simple uh it's not i i know that the gnome purists and there are those out there will say that i'm not using gnome the way that it's meant to be used that's probably true that's probably true but i don't care 
Like, if I'm going to use this thing, if I'm going to use this thing that I really don't care for all that much, I'm going to tweak it to the point where I can use it and at least be somewhat happy with it. And that's what I've done. If it offends you because I've gone and made GNOME look like not GNOME, then I'm sorry, but go use your computer however you want to use it. I'll use mine the way that I want to use it. That's the way that it should be. I can make GNOME look however I want it to look. And if the GNOME devs really cared, they would, you know, kill all extensions forever and never enable them and, and no, everybody would have to use vanilla GNOME. But they haven't. They still support extensions, even if it seems to be grudging at, at times. So I will use them. I will use a lot of them. And if that causes me problems in the future where things crash and burn, well, that's what KDE is for. <laughs> so that is it for the, this video. If you have thoughts on gnome or any of my use case here you guys can leave those in the comment section below i'd really love to hear from you thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon patreon.com slash linuscast that's all of these fine people thank you so very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you guys are all absolutely amazing if you want to support me you can do so in any number of ways patreon as i mentioned there i'm also available on ko-fi and youtube you can also head on over to the shop which is available at shop.thelinuscast.org there you'll find all sorts of of awesome merch available to you, all the proceeds for which goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. I truly do appreciate everybody who has gone over there and checked that stuff out, so make sure you head on over there as well and check it out, because it is kind of awesome. So, uh, that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really, I know I haven't been making a lot of videos. Work has just been absolutely bonkers lately. Absolutely bonkers. I took a week off, I went on a little bit of a staycation, and all of a sudden, it turns out that nobody at work actually does things. Who do, other than me. I didn't think I was the worker. I thought I was the lazy one, but apparently I was wrong. Anyways, enough complaining out of this guy. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time on uh, the Linux cast. I'll see you next time. I don't know how to do the innings anymore. <laughs>